welcome to Corridor Island. Welcome to the island of valor, peace, and international understanding. And also welcome to the island called The Rock. So, uh, we are now here. Ito po tayo may, we are now here at the lowest. This is the lowest in a rich part of Corridor Island called Bottom Side Area. And later on, we can see the map of Corridor Island when we reach museum area. You can see later on that this island is shaped like a tadpole. Just like a baby frog. They had a head. Oh, here. We have a small map of Corridor Island here. So, Corridor Island is shaped like a tadpole. They had a head and they had a tail. So, the head of Corridor is facing West Philippine Sea. And the tail of Corridor curve is towards Manila. So, Manila to Corridor is 26.6 miles or roughly 42 kilometers. And you are landed here at the North Channel of Corridor Island. Here. We are now here at the next part of Corridor Island and we are at the North Channel. North Channel of Corridor is facing Bataan Peninsula. So Bataan Peninsula is only 3 miles across to Corridor Island. And also we have a South Channel. South Channel of Corridor that we can see later on. South Channel of Corridor is facing the province of Cavite in Batangas. 8 miles across from Corridor Island. Corridor is very close to Bataan, far from Cavite, but still, Corridor is part of Cavite. During the Spanish time, no, during Spanish time, when, this, this, when the Spaniards occupied Corridor Island, this island is part of Bataan Peninsula. This island is called Corregimiento del Mareveles during Spanish time. But when this island was occupied by the Americans as early as 1898, 1898, after the Battle of Manila Bay, Corridor Island became a part of Cavite. There, 1902. 1902, time of General George Cameron Forbes. He is the one who signed the area of jurisdiction that this island became a part of Cavite because of Sangley Point. If you're familiar with Sangli Point, Sangli Point Cavite is the first U.S. Navy naval base in the Philippines. Since Corridor at the time is under U.S. Army, that is why this island became a part of Cavite. So as I said, this island's barangay 53-P Sangli Point Cavite. That is the address of Corridor Island. Now the building to your right side. Building to the right is the Administration Building of Corridor Foundation Incorporated. But that building, that building is a replica of the old Spanish schoolhouse during the Spanish time. side is called Middleside Barracks. Middleside Barracks was constructed by the Americans as early as 1914, 1914. Now, during that time, no, during the Americans developed Corridor Island, we have no cement factory yet in the Philippines. No. Now, in Asian country, they have only one country manufacturing cement then. Only one. Only Japan. And Australia. But since Japan is closer to the Philippines, the Americans ordered cement from Japan. Ironically, the cement came from Asano Cement Corporation, Osaka, Japan. So why Japan? Now, 1914 that was the start of the First World War. Now, Japan is part of the Allied Force at that time. Because Asian country were not included in the First World War. So during that time, the... Asian country are part of the Allied forces. So that's why the Americans and the Japanese were friends then. That's why the Americans were sent from Japan. But have you noticed? Have you noticed the rebars? The twisted rebars used by the Americans to construct those buildings. Those rebars came all the way from the U.S. From Bethlehem Steel, Pennsylvania, USA. The building is 300 meters long. Three floors, it can accommodate 3,000 soldiers in maximum accommodation. 
The first level of the building is their mess hall, shower room, restroom. And the second and third level is their sleeping quarters. And mostly the Americans use double deck beds. So this first building is home of the Americans, the 60th Coast Artillery American Enlisted Men. Now, the building is badly damaged. Why? Because the building received two heavy bombardment. Two. First, it was bombed by the Japanese. From December 29, 1941 up to May 5 of 1942. Almost five months of bombings. Twice bombing a day. No? And not only that, when the Americans came back to liberate this island from the Japanese, February 16 of 1945, they dropped also 60 tons of bombs one day alone before they landed on topside area. So frankly speaking, the Americans did more damage when they came back in 1945. If you are only one family, I will do later on uh, just a short uh, trekking. We go to enter the small tunnel later on. Not included in the tour. But since you are only one family, I will make it that later on. So, bayan battery ko yun. Pasok kami doon sa mga dalit. Tanay lang pinasok kami. This is the crater that he was talking about, made by that big bomb that the U.S. dropped when they took the island from the Japanese. Wow, what a crater that is. My golly. Sure did a lot of damage. <laughs> Magazine room number one is far to the right. And magazine room number two is here in front. Now, have you noticed they have a center building, a small building at the center. That building is the command post building. The plotting room, fire direction control room, and also radio communication room. Have you noticed? The gun are located on a depressed area. So meaning from that area you cannot see your target. Right? Because you are facing the blank wall. Now, the Americans, they have spotters or forward observers located on the high ground of Corridor Island, especially the, uh, later on when we reach lighthouse area. You can see a taller tower there that was the, Ameri the American used that as their observation tower. And the radio is the location of the enemy and how far is the enemy on that center building. Fire direction control room, radio commission room, and a platting room. Now, Battery Way is named in honor to his second lieutenant, Henry Way. He is an American officer who died during the Filipino-American War. Because we fought American three years time, 1899 to 1902. So, uh, Lieutenant Henry Way, he was died during the Filipino-American War. So, this guy was his name after him, after second Lieutenant Henry Way. That's why they call it Battery Way. So, again... Oh, they're n oh, you would think they're bats, but they're not. They're not bats. Those are sheep or swallows birds. Whoa. Also here. Here, down. They act like bats, the way they live. Yeah, no? Newly hats. See that there? Newly hats. Yeah. And that was some of the egg. Can you see that? Oh, look at that egg. Those are tiny little things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's one right there. Yeah, shine back on there again. Yeah, right there. Wow, it's amazing how fast those birds come in and out. Absolutely amazing. No wonder they're called swift. Whoa, got to get out of this doorway, you get clunked on the head. And the part of their 13 miles of railroad tracks all around Corridor Island. As I said, this island is only 3.2 square miles of land, but the Americans considered here 13 miles of railroad tracks. This island was crisscrossed by those railroad tracks before the war broke out.
battleship should up. You know why? Because the Japanese know very well about this island. This island is an impregnable fortress against naval attack. That's why when the Japanese invade Manila, they did not pass by Corregidor Island. The Japanese landed there at the northern part of Luzon. Apari, Vigan, Ilocosor, Ilocos Norte, Esavela, Cagayan, Lingayen. They not invade Manila by Pastro Corridor Island because it's suicide to them. That's why this gun became obsolete because there were no targets showed up. And this is the only gun. That is the only gun that has repaired by the Japanese. You know what? That dome represents a parachute because the paratroopers came in here first and they made tremendous sacrifices. Pretty humbling experience here when you know the history of this island and all the people who died and the importance of this island to the war and now how peaceful it is. Birds singing, kind of eerie in a way. the lighthouse. The lower portion of the lighthouse is original. Huh? That was constructed during the Spanish time, 1836. In the tower here to your right side, no? the tower very close to us, that is one of the observation <laughs> tower. Observation tower by the Americans. And move a little bit to the right, you can see a tower with a radar. See that? That was newly constructed newly constructed by the Philippine government. That is the uh, Philippine Port Authority and the radar on top is the VTMS or Vessel Traffic Monitoring System. Now, we will stop in here for 10 minutes. If you... Whoa. Those are seashells. Seashells. Very thin seashells. Wow. Didn't let a lot of light in. H have, you, have, have you ever heard a scallop shell? No. Scallop? This is a scallop shell, a very, very thin shell. Very thin and flat. They, they call it a uh, paper shell. Wow, never heard of that. Wow, that's interesting.
Yan. These are found here inside the tunnel. Typewriters have seen better days, excuse me. Have you noticed? It's getting colder here inside. Yeah, you can feel. If there were any ghosts, they would be here. You can feel. Formerly the main uh, office of uh, the activities here inside, the lighting sound show. Now, April 29 of 1942, <laughs> that is the time that the Japanese celebrating their emperor's birthday. The bomb corridor in three sides. The bomb corridor from Bataan, from Cavite, and from the air. So this tunnel filled beyond its capacity. As I said, this tunnel, they have only 1,000 bed capacity. But during the time, they have more than 1,500 patients inside this hospital. And all wounded because of the bombings. After the war, some of the nurses and doctors assigned in this island, inside this hospital. They tell the, the story what really happened here during the time, April 29, 1942. During the operation, they said that the blood inside this hospital wings is thick as two inches on the floor. Meaning, this tunnel is flooding by blood during the time. Just imagine 1,500 patients all wounded because of the bombings. And those nurses and doctors, they wrote a book about what happened here. And the book entitled, We Band of Angels. That is the title of their book. Oh, that's good. Mm. Now, this one is an air, <clears throat> no. This one is the uh, ventilation shaft going to some of the laterals inside, ventilation shaft. But when Makarno left Corridor Island, March 11 of 1942 midnight, he came from here and he passed through this area going to the north. Remember, we knew the, uh, where the state of Makarno uh, is located. That is where he left Corridor Island he, and we, he passed through in this area, midnight of March 11 of 1942. He used this uh, passage going to the north. And this one here is the quarters for the nurses. Now I will show you, I will show you how Japanese commit suicide. Here, here. You can see damage on the floor. Yeah. If you can see damage on the floor, Look on top of the ceiling. More damage, right? Yes. But on the side, less damage. You know why? Because when the Japanese commit suicide, they group themselves for 10, 15, 20 to 25 person. They form, they form a circle. They hold their hand. And one of them hold a grenade. And after that, after they pray, or after the singing, one of the Japanese dropped uh, grenades on the center. But most of those soldiers who form a circle, they have their own grenades in their hands. So after one grenade explode, some of the grenades that they hold it explode also. So all of the shrapnels from the grenades hit their bodies. But look at on top. Damage. On the floor, another damage. On the wall right here, less damage because some of the shrapnels from the floor hit their bodies. That's why it's less damage on the wall, but on the ceiling, a lot, and also here. Okay, if you find, if you can find a damage on the floor, look at that. A lot of damages. 
but less fair inside, it's much colder compared to the outside. Can go straight. 